Hi, we're Lily111 and we know everyone here can get urgently ill at any point in their lives, desperately wanting advice to receive the right medical care. Now imagine being stuck in a call queue, averaging seven and a half minutes or longer to be assessed by a flowchart algorithm from a non-clinician. Meanwhile, one patient dies every three, 23 minutes in A&E whilst waiting for treatment. In the last published month, 111 received 68,000 calls a day with this phone service costing 1.5 billion a year to run alone. Our mission is to guide patients to the right care quicker, smarter, and cheaper. Our solution, Lily 111, is a clinician validated AI chatbot trained using verified resources from mice and the NHS. In our bench what tests, it's been proven to be faster and more cost effective than existing 111 solutions. Okay, so this is an overview of our model. So as we said, we've got input from the existing guidelines in our chat model, and then outcomes from the selection of destinations as 111 would do. And we've chosen from our proof of concept to look at headache because it is a common presenting complaint for 111 and the emergency department. We'll give you an overview of the model now. So just for some sort of organization, on the left, the main screen is a patient interacting with the model that has a headache. Top right is a patient interacting with the same one-on-one -on -one interface, same problem with one-on-one -on -one interface, and on the bottom right is the counter before your call is even answered. So you'll see with the model, it's, um, it's trying to understand the severity of the headache, the type of the headache, it knows the red flag questions to ask to achieve the correct destination, and it will go through all of those until it reaches the final des appropriate destination for the patient, which will just skip through you. Um, so at the end, it will tell the patient where the appropriate destination is, it will give some explanation about why that is the appropriate and also some safety netting in the meantime. Lily provides a decision quicker than the online 111 website and the calls. And it also gives um, a reason as why it's chosen that destination to reduce patient anxiety and provide more reassurance. We want Lily to we want to use Lily to hopefully reduce unnecessary ED presentations so that resources in the NHS can be allocated um, more better. Um, and we also benchmarked, um, and it had for emergency presentations, really was 100% concordant to 111. We did that by having a constellation of symptoms that the clinicians um, talked about, put it into Lily 111, and compared it to the uh, 111 website. And it showed that Lily 111 actually gave better outcomes compared to 111 for things like space occupying vision, where we said, or Lily said to, give, uh, to go to primary care rather than 111 saying to go to a pharmacist. <clears throat> so we had five clinicians backing this and six um, machine learning developers, and we used one, the 111 website to feed the model, and also UpToDate, which is only available to clinicians. Um, and so that's how we're trying to speed up the triage time. Um, the patient experience has been tremendously improved. Um, as our AI model is more empathic, it offers contextual information and why that, that decision has been made for you as a patient. It offers reassurance and it actually shows that it listens to you as a patient. And overall, it is a more inclusive, accessible, and trusting experience than the traditional 111. Our solution is financially beneficial compared to the traditional NHS 111 service. So it costs 11 pounds for NHS 111 voice call. There are 68,000 calls per day. Of these calls, 20% of them are dropped uh, before you are reaching to an agent. And assuming some of this patient, anxious patients will go to the ED, that costs 418 pounds per ED visit. So compared to that, our solution costs just 10 pennies uh, per call. Also, we, if we assume 10% of, of, uh, of the calls which are triage will, uh, let's say if, the, if we assume 10% of these calls are are using our solution will save 70k per day and 26 million per year. So future plans, um, we will add some extra translation, there'll be some voice capability, some extra context from patient care records, and some additional oversight and explainabilities as well. We think healthcare AI shouldn't be should be accessible to all. We don't want to eliminate the phone call um, capability, especially for the elderly who may have the least access to tech with the most comorbidities. Excellent, thank you. Right, any questions? Anyone? So, a really, really interesting proposition. So, 
I get the model probably works really well if you ask it the right questions. How have you tested or thought about testing with real life people who won't necessarily know how to answer some of these questions or actually maybe actually fully understand the prompts of the chatbots coming back with? So I think that's one of the beauties of a, a large language model is that you can ask you can ask your questions in different ways. Um, so firstly, as Emily says, we're not trying to get rid of um, the traditional way of accessing this anyway. But for those that are able to access a chatbot, for example, if it doesn't get the answers that it needs, it can ask a question in a different way. Um, so more than they ask, they ask a specific type of symptom. And as your question about validation, we thought it would be run maybe run initially in a shadow deployment. So a would initially select a cohort of one-on-one -on -one calls, and then a team member or a researcher can transcribe those calls into the and determine what its outcome is compared to the one-on-one -on -one, um, destination as well. Can I ask very nice follow-up? So you know, with one-on-one -on -one call handlers, they'll sometimes, I think, have access to history. Was there a view that you would have the model yeah, so if you want to make the question for everybody here. So the yeah. um, question was that one on one has access to patient history as well. So um, our, one of our extensions would be to have access to the National Care Records <coughs> Service, which would provide some additional context for the patient background as well. So a patient that is known to be hypertensive, cardiovascular disease, maybe in different risk groups. So a very young patient with no risk factors. Just on the first question, also due to the nature of the technology, we could also have a more patient-centric prompt uh, engineering, so actually a more inclusive language, a more easy to understand language, and removing that medical barrier that maybe some people wouldn't be able to understand. But also we have different features of having different languages and translation to the entire, to the entire population of, of the UK as well. No time for one more? Okay, Team Trends, you're up next, if you want. Yeah, okay. Sorry, sorry, it's just a quick follow-up question. So, um, how do you prevent people from manipulating the system? So if I know how to answer, I want to see Amy, that's my end goal. How can I manipulate it? So I can tell someone to look at Amy? It's the same with one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that is a big thing. And patients that want to come to Amy will come to Amy anyway. So I think it's not, uh, we're not aiming to get rid of those patients, they're going to come anyway. Um, and actually, the main value is not the emergent cases, because they need to go to A&E anyway, it's the grey cases and um, where they need to be the record to improve the results. That's where the main, that's the main opportunity here. Also, the LLM will be trained on patients' previous data as well, um, like their histopathology reports or pathology reports. So, it will be a difficult to maybe manipulate LLM like that. So, that's the future. And one last uh, difference is that we have, with this technology, a proper send-off. So at the end of a patient experience, in 111 right now, it would tell you, go to call your GP, go to uh, emergency room, that's it. Whilst we actually give a context based on your answer, your pain is graded five, um, you told us these things, then we would be likely to call your GP. You could do this with, so it's more guidance and a proper send-off. So it actually it's more trusting for you to actually stay home. Um, when we were doing some patient research, we realized that a lot of patients didn't even trust the traditional 111 because they just get the go call your GP and you're like, actually I'm gonna go to the emergency room because I don't trust it. So that's why I think this is a good solution to have more context to, to the patient, uh, self-activation or understanding.